Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to Prep Medic. This week's video is a full update of my new minimalist everyday carry. So I do an updated everyday carry video every six months to a year because I am always changing what I have on me. Now, for those of you that are new here or don't know who I am, I do have some professional experience in law enforcement, SWAT paramedicine, as a street paramedic, and now as a flight paramedic that shape what I choose to have on me on a daily basis. Now, for many, this is too much. It's not stuff that you're going to realistically carry. And for others, it's not enough. So this is what I have. This isn't saying this is what you need to carry on you. This is not saying everybody needs to have this, but it's what I have chosen to both make my life more convenient as well as keep myself and my family safe. So with all of that being said, let's jump into the video. Let's start with the boring stuff really quick. First of all, and not gonna spend any time of it, time on it, I have my keys. The only notable thing on my keys is an air tag. I lose these things all the freaking time. And it's nice to be able to chime something, to have a little navigation app on my phone to find them. But other than that, there is nothing special here. As far as a wallet, like most of you guys are probably carrying, I actually recently upgraded from just a single stack wallet to a folder just because the Live the Creed one I was carrying was a little bit difficult uh, to get cash in and out of. This wallet here is from Faro Concepts. There's nothing special about it. It is minimalist, it is pretty flat. I can put it in my back pocket, sit in the car and have no issues. And yes, it has the extra pocket for a little bit of cash in the back and enough to carry my license, concealed carry permit, three uh, different cards, and then like my insurance information, my son's insurance information without any issue. Is there anything special about Faro Concepts making wallet? Absolutely not, but it does come in more muted colors, which I kind of like, uh, especially this wolf gray right here. So that is my wallet. Now for my phone, I recently upgraded to the, um, what is it, 13 Pro Max uh, phone. So it's one of the largest iPhones uh, you can get. I like iPhones just because they have really good cameras in a pinch if something cool is happening around me, I can get it out, uh, film stuff. People say, you know, oh, this Android camera has better specs on it. I, I don't care. I'm in the Apple ecosystem. I use uh, the MacBook Pro for all my editing and I just like these Apple products, so I stick with them. Now, for a case, I'm using the Juggernaut case. Now, this case here, I, I don't really like it a whole lot for like an everyday case. It is huge, it is bulky. It keeps this phone super safe. I could throw this across the room and nothing's going to happen to it. But the real reason I put this case on there is because this is actually intended to go with my plate carrier. I can clip it onto the front and it can function as like an ATAC system or ITAC system. But what's really cool about that is it becomes kind of a body camera. So if I'm at the range, I'm gonna get some footage or some POV footage of me shooting. I can clip that on there, activate the camera and get some really cool shots that way. But like I said, for an everyday case, it's a little bit bulky. Uh, when I'm like running with it, put in my running vest or uh, my shorts, it really uh, sticks out and kind of sucks. And the other thing I don't really like about it is I have a screen protector over this and the case encroaches on that screen just a little bit. So it will bow up the screen protector periodically. I just need to press down and click it back uh, into place. So not my favorite case, but it's really the only one that does what I want it to do. If you know a different case, uh, that can clip into a plate carrier easily uh, and doesn't take up quite as much space, please let me know in the comments down below. But uh, we have the iPhone 13 Max with the uh, Juggernaut case here. And as far as the phone go, it, it goes, it just works. And uh, I like that. All right, getting into a little bit more of the uh, uncommon stuff that I carry. For a watch, I am carrying the Garmin Tactic 7, I believe it is. And I've been uh, carrying this watch for probably close to a year now. I have a full review on it and all of its features. I upgraded the band from the silicone band to their, I don't know, nylon runners band. It's like 50 bucks, a little bit pricey, but it's a lot more comfortable and I can wear it for a long period of time. Why I love 
this watch is number one, it is indestructible. Uh, it's got Gorilla Glass here. I can drown this, slam this on the ground. Nothing is going to happen with this watch. and I don't need to get another case on it, which is great because this thing is absolutely huge. For a uh, battery life, it gets about three weeks of battery life without a charge, me wearing it 24 seven. I don't take it off at night because I like the sleep metrics it gives me, especially working 24 hour shifts. It is really nice to know how little I have actually slept. I use it as a fitness tracker. So I'm doing a lot of running right now, a lot of trail running. Uh, did a marathon a couple weeks ago, doing another one next week, uh, and then hoping to do some ultra marathons later. So this has very accurate GPS and it has all of the topographic maps of the United States loaded directly on the watch. So it doesn't need anything to uh, get to those maps. It's not like the creme de la creme of navigation uh, devices. Like I'd still like to have a big GPS or a map, but in a pinch, it works to get you out of really crappy situations. And it's better than like the Apple Watch's little trackback breadcrumb uh, feature, which can uh, have some issues here and there. So GPS is very uh, spot on with this watch. The tracking is spot on, gives you a lot of really cool metrics if you're into that. If you're not, this watch probably isn't worth it uh, to you. And the other thing about this and why some people might choose like an Apple Watch Ultra over this watch is this doesn't have a lot of the convenience features that an Apple Watch has. So this won't unlock my computer for me. I can see text messages on it, but I can't send anything on it. This doesn't have a cellular, cellular plan linked to it. I can download music to the watch and then play them to my uh, AirPods, but there's nothing that can just stream it directly to the watch. So you do lack some of those convenience features. One thing that I use literally every day with this watch, uh, sneaking out of the house in the morning to go for a run, going to work, trying to get dressed without waking up my wife, uh, sneaking into my kid's room to get stuff, uh, not wanting to wake them up, is this has a flashlight on it. So double click up here and you actually have a light at the front of the watch. Now this light can be turned to uh, green if you're doing like night vision or night stuff. The uh, other version of this, the, the civilian version of this watch uh, actually has a red light uh, if you want that for map reading, but this is better for NVGs, which we do use uh, on the helicopter. So I do like having the option for a green LED as well. And that is probably, <laughs> the best feature on this watch. It seems gimmicky, but I swear I use it all the time. It's always on my wrist and I don't have to pull out my phone, get the light going. And it also makes it so I don't have to carry a separate light in my pocket, which I did for some years. And I just stopped doing it because I hated it. It was so inconvenient. So some people say, oh, you need a flashlight anyways. Honestly, I like this thing. And like I said, battery lasts for literally three weeks and I'm using it every day to track activities with that. So really cool watch. I love this thing. People ask me all the time if I would switch to the Ultra uh, over this. No, I'm going to keep the uh, Garmin Tactics. It has a bunch of other tactical features. You can check out that video uh, on my channel to learn uh, more about those small features. Now, I do carry a firearm on me every day just because I want to be able to defend my family if things go south. Now, I have never drawn my concealed carry firearm. I hope I never have to, but it is something I have on me. Uh, to protect life if the need arises. The gun I upgraded to from my Glock 19 that I was carrying for like, I don't know, the last six years or so is the SIG P365. And I went with this one for a couple reasons. So we're gonna make this safe here. So I went with this for a couple reasons, mainly because SIG does some magic in this magazine. And this thing right here holds 12 rounds plus one. So this gun holds 13 rounds and it is absolutely tiny compared to my Glock. It is very thin. I don't even realize I have it uh, on my belt when I'm carrying it. So that's really why I switched to it. Now for a light laser combo, I got the TLR6. I don't really need the laser feature so much, but it's nice to have. And this is just a flush mounted, very small light with enough lumens to get the job done, but it's nothing that's, you know, sticking out in front of the gun. You know, for a while with my Glock, I had that light that came out and especially with a combat gun, it defeats the purpose of a combat gun if you have a light that is absolutely huge on it. So this magazine is the 12 and then one in the chamber, which I really like. I do have a 15 plus one um, that I can put in it. And then I think it's like a 10, which is flush fit, which is really small, but it's just not comfortable to hold. With this one, 
I actually have uh, some pinky real estate and can hold it very well. So really like this firearm uh, compared to my Glock for everyday carry. It also has uh, night sights already on it. So really good stock sights uh, that you don't really have to upgrade or do much to this gun once you get it. For ammo, I'm using the Hornady Critical Defense, I believe. Um, it's what most people are using for defensive rounds. It's what's used at the Sheriff's Office. So if it was good enough for them, it is good enough for me. For a holster, I'm using the uh, uh, Vetter holster. I don't quite know what model it is, but what I really like about this guy is, one, it doesn't break the bank. It fits the gun really nicely. It's really well done Kydex. Um, and then it's just one clip. It doesn't have two clips. I don't need to like, you know, uh, straddle a belt loop or anything there. It has this guy here to just bring the handle into my stomach a little bit and help me not print. So I really like this holster. Uh, it works very well and I can wear it with pretty much every uh, set of pants that I have. You can rotate it either way, but really it's a no frills holster and you can just kind of throw it in and go. So really like that. Okay, so for a belt, uh, I have switched over and I'm trying this out. I'm not, I'm still not quite sold on it, but I started using the Blue Alpha uh, belt. I think that's their EDC belt. And why I love this is there's no buckle on it. It's just this pull through strap and it's easy to micro adjust the belt depending on what you have. And then it is very sturdy. So the gun draws consistently every single time. The reason I like not having a bulk buckle is because this doesn't print. Um, you know, if you have a normal belt, like any kind of belt buckle, it's going to print when your gun goes in it. So a lot of people put the buckle off to the side. That's just a pain in my opinion. So this one I can throw on like a normal belt, cinch it up. It's really easy to micro adjust. I don't have to poke extra holes depending on how much I weigh that day. Um, but it is very easy, uh, to get going, uh, in the morning and holds the gun very secure. I ordered this way too big. So I wear like a 32 pants. Really, I'd probably fit in a 30 right now, a 28 with all the running I'm doing. And I got a 32 belt thinking, well, I've got a gun in my um, waistband. I want to get uh, a size up. And I think that's against their directions. And it's just a little bit big to get this thing with the gun where I need it. It's literally all the way uh over. Uh, so I might buy a smaller size. A lot of people swear by these belts though. I just don't have enough time on it to really give you a solid recommendation there. All right, last but not least, and something that I feel like my EDC is known for is medical items. So for a long time, I've carried ankle kits and I still swear by them. If things are just going bad in the world, if there's a lot of civil unrest uh, where I'm at, I will definitely throw on an ankle kit but I've really kind of downsized for everyday use into carrying just one thing of packing gauze. So this is quick clock combat gauze. Uh, it's really what we carry at work and stuff. It's what I've been most trained to use for wound packing. And I carry this because this can be used on any kind of arterial hemorrhage. So traditionally, if you have a tourniquet, you can tourniquet limbs because that's really fast and then pack junctional sites. But if you don't have a tourniquet, you can still pack a limb injury. And there are things this won't be able to treat, but it's one of those, I, I'm willing to potentially sacrifice that capability to have something that's just super convenient. So this folds down, I can keep this in my front or back pocket really easily and you don't even know it's there. Otherwise, if I don't throw this in my pocket, t-shirts work really good for wound packing. Uh, and I know that's not, you know, tactical cool or anything, but this is really, you know, tight knit fabric. If you take this off, you shove that in somebody's wound, it's going to work almost as good as quick clot. So that's another option for you. Now, like I said, I will carry more on me if the situation uh, dictates. And I still have like with my SWAT medic stuff I'm doing, I have a full med kit in my car with literally everything you could need, including, you know, pretty advanced ALS supplies. So I have that in my car, my backpack, which I'm wearing the Vertex Gamut right now, um, that has a uh, full IFAC in it with a tourniquet, more of this, ARS needles, NPAs and stuff. So I usually have that stuff on me. This is just what I have kind of on my person's ready to go for like, you know, CPR or something. I don't carry a shield because hands only CPR does wonders for patients and really uh, doesn't have as many downsides as people used to think when compared to like 30 to two or with rescue breaths. 
uh, intermixed there. So that's what I am carrying for medical. Now, some people are looking at this like, wow, that is a lot of stuff. Those of you that have followed this channel for a while are like, wow, Sam, you really uh, slimmed down your EDC quite a bit. And I get it. Like I said at the beginning, this isn't for everybody, but this is what I have chosen to carry on a regular basis. If you guys have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave them in the comments down below, and I will see you next week.